Hello, Christ United Methodist Church friends and family. It's Pastor Jeremiah coming to you with this week's Upper Room devotional. And today's is titled, In Your Hands, and starts with reading Proverbs 3, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not unto your own understanding. You know, our author, Michael Albanese from New York, really strikes a chord with me today and asks some really tough questions and engages some really difficult theological worldviews. And, and it's hard to hear. Like, it really is difficult sometimes to deal with the way we think about what God is doing in our lives and to make sense out of it all. And I realize that a lot of times we're asking the wrong questions. We're responding to the problems in our lives, looking for the wrong answers, because we're not looking first through God's perspective, but through our own perspective. And Michael ends up helping us to maybe start to wrestle with that. And I don't expect as you come away from this devotional that you're like, oh, ding, light bulb, I got an understanding of now how I should look at things better and now I'll never struggle again. No, you're going to struggle. We're all going to struggle. We are all those with our own will, our own imaginations, our own hopes, our own desires. We are all those who are in our bodies, in the flesh, who want our way. Sometimes I think the prayer that we pray more often than not unintentionally is, my will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And we want God to meet us where we want with our expectations. And when God doesn't fulfill those expectations in the ways that we want, we kind of throw our hands up in the air and say, well, where are you? We start to engage doubt and fear. We start to wonder if our faith is in vain. We start to wonder if anything's worth it. And we question and we wander sometimes wander away from God or our faith or we struggle with the answers and then it's but it's also a twofold problem it's not like we don't have bad theological answers oftentimes given to us that create all kinds of conundrums I spend a lot of time talking with people saying I mean I don't know maybe you've heard the saying God doesn't give you more than you can handle and then your response is I wish God didn't trust me so much I don't feel like I can handle this and I will tell you that I believe that's bad theological worldview. We live in an exist in an, and exist in a world that's not as God created it. It's out of order with God's original intent for creation. It's fallen, it's broken, and it's being redeemed and restored. And we're a part of that redemption narrative. And God takes on flesh, comes and lives with us in the person of Christ to live with creation, to redeem creation, to restore it. And God is with us through our struggles, through our difficulties. God doesn't give us cancer. God doesn't give us dementia, as our um, author kind of suggests and or deals with topically. God doesn't give us sickness and diseases to teach us some sort of grand cosmic lesson. Instead, God gives us the tools to get through it. And the greater message is, is that God is with us, getting us through it. God isn't giving us cancer. God is getting us through cancer. God doesn't give us dementia. God gets us through dementia. God doesn't make us become caregivers to teach us some sort of lesson about patience and service and gratitude. Instead, God gives us the strength to serve others in this world that is not as it should be. When we start with bad theological thinking, we end up with misconceptions and misunderstandings about who God is and who we are in response to God. And so I encourage you to struggle with this. Rather than dealing with a difficult thing and saying, all right, what's God trying to teach me now? Instead, maybe the better question to ask yourself is, all right, how is God with me getting me through this right now? It's a different question, a different way to look at it, but changes everything. I struggle sometimes because my way isn't being done. I have no idea how it's going to get done. And yet I know that God's goodness and mercy and grace goes before me. God is working all things out to good. In the end, God gets what God wants. Love wins in the end. And God's plan will not be thwarted. 
The world fallen, not as it was created, will be restored and redeemed at some point later. And no matter what happens, this life or the life to come, in the end, God's vision and plan for you, for me, is far better than anything we can imagine for ourselves. But that doesn't mean we're not still stuck here dealing with what's right in front of us, dealing with our pain, our suffering, our loss, our worry, our anxiety, dealing with the loved ones that we have suffering and having to serve them and get them through it. And sometimes it feels overwhelming more than we can bear. And it's at that point that we should trust that God gives us what we need to get us through. That God empowers us, equips us, gives us courage, grants us wisdom, gives us patience for those moments. And not only that, that we aren't alone. That God is struggling there with us. That's the whole point of Emmanuel, God with us. The whole point of this Easter going from Maundy Thursday, where God tells us through Christ to, to love one another, to serve one another. Well, that alleviates a lot. And then to Good Friday, where we see Christ on the cross and then put into the tomb. But death is not the end. Christ conquers that. And we are those who celebrate the empty tomb, the resurrection, the transformation, that that which seemed lost and broken and unescapable, that which seemed impossible to defeat, death itself God claims life out of the jaws of death and gives us the same gift as well. We have to be willing to trust God with all of it and not struggle against it, but align our sails with God's, point them in the right direction and know that no matter what we face, God is able to get us through. God doesn't give us the problems we endure. God is the toolbox to get us through the problems we endure. I encourage you to think differently. And I'm going to let us look at and not to lean under our understanding. We may not understand it, but God's eternal perspective goes beyond this life, beyond the dash between two dates and exists outside of time and in, in regards to something greater than just this life. And sometimes we get so fixated on this life and our expectations that we forget that this life is not the whole story. It's just a small part of a much grander story for all of us. Um, so lean not unto your own understanding, but instead look for God's wisdom as Proverbs reminds us. Let's see what Michael writes. When my wife was diagnosed with an aggressive form of dementia, we were devastated. I watched helplessly as our 27 years of marriage slowly disappeared from her memory. I struggled to make sense of the deep sorrow, frustration, and anger I felt. I wanted to know why. I laid my heart bare to God. I prayed honestly, openly, and sometimes angrily as I expressed my frustration and my desire for answers. I prayed through tears, pleading with God to heal my beloved wife and to remove my burden of being a full-time caregiver while working a full-time job. One morning, when it felt like my prayers were going nowhere, I was able to slow down and quiet my mind enough to hear God's message. I needed to pray not for understanding, but for faith. I needed to look not for answers, but for courage to trust in God. I began to pray for God's presence in my life and in my heart, and I have grown closer to God than I have ever been before. I know God is working for good. Sometimes I can't see the good, but I know God is faithful and will guide me through this. I don't have the answers, but I have been richly blessed by God's presence, which gives me the strength to cope with the tragedy of my wife's illness. So true. So much of what Michael is saying is what we're talking about here today. We have our own desires, our own fleshly wants to the, the, the make it over. Notice he said, I wanted her to be healed. I wanted me to be no longer responsible to have to do all this work. And, and he was praying for the wrong things. Now, does that mean we shouldn't pray for healing or hope for it? No, of course not. We should pray instead as Jesus taught us to pray. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It's all about alignment. And it's not about God's will or not to make it heal. It's about no matter what happens, the outcome is still the same. That God, in the end, is with us. Whether everything seems to be falling apart or not, it's being redeemed and restored, being remade and transformed into something new. And if we can't see, just we pray for eyes to see later. We need to have faith to get us through the murky, un- um, uncertain times that we face. We face them all over the place, yet we know, and more often than not, each of us can see God in that rearview mirror. Looking back, I can see how God got me here. 
And in this present moment, maybe I don't know where God is. But I know that the God of the rearview mirror got me to this point, And so I don't need to worry about now. And I also don't need to worry about the future. Because God is with me through it all. This present moment will be in the rear view. And the future moments that are going to come, God is already there. Working all things out to something more glorious for me, for my loved ones, than I can ever imagine for myself. And that's the trust we need to place in God. That God's love is greater than anything we can imagine or hope for for ourselves. And there was an attachment for Michael, attachment to his desire for his wife. And it wasn't an unrighteous desire. In fact, God understands and sympathizes and empathizes. God took on flesh, understands that pain and loss. That's why Jesus wept before he ever healed Lazarus. He mourns with us. It's the God with us, Emmanuel, that we know. And the problem is that sometimes we get too fixated on now rather than God's future plans for all of creation, which, by the way, we know the story. It's all redeemed. It's all glorified. Death is not the end. Suffering is not the end, though it is a part of what we endure now. And so no matter what you're facing, no matter what you're struggling, ask different questions. Rather than why, maybe ask how. How do I get through this? How are you with me in this? How can I align my will with yours so that I can get through this? How do I reveal in my response to what's happening to me, God's love and my faith in God that surpasses any understanding that I have? How, God, do I show others that no matter what I face, I never doubt you. Boy, now that's a disciple's journey. That's what we're called to do. That's what Jesus embodied and exemplified for each of us. He prayed too, that the cup would pass from him. Pay attention this Good Friday. He didn't want to die. He wanted to align himself with God's will. And God's will was that Christ would not back down from his message of love. And because of that, this broken world crucified him. And he didn't back down because love was more important than self-preservation and his will being met. God calls us to love, to sacrifice ourselves for others to know God's love. That's the call. That's the journey. And we may have to give up everything. At some point, we all will lay this life down. The question is, is how will we face those struggles? How will we endure the tension of this life? How will we face the losses? Will we give up and doubt and run and seek our will to be done? Or will we face it with a smile and say, do what you will. This life is not the end, and I'm not attached to that at all. Instead, I'm attached to God's will, which goes way beyond anything I can imagine. Or, as Proverbs remind us, we're not going to lean under our, under our understandings, the world's ways of expectation of miraculous things, though possible. Instead, we lean under God's, on, lean under God's vision, God's way of doing things. And God has willed that each of us seek him first, no matter what we face, and not be so attached to this world that we lose track of the big picture God's redemption and grace and conquering of sin, death, and the grave for all of humanity and all of creation. Praise God. Hallelujah. The grave is empty. I look forward to seeing you either here at Christ United Methodist Church or online or at your own churches. Make sure it's Easter weekend. Find a place to worship. Start this holiday season the right way in a church, sitting with friends and neighbors, in a community, praising God. Find your home church. Go there. And if not, come here. Our services are at 9 and 1030, and all are welcome. Come as you are. Jeans and a t-shirt, great. That's your Easter dress. I'm wearing what I'll be preaching in, and I got jeans on where you can't see. So don't worry about it all. Just come. Be with a community. Praise God. Worship. Start your holidays with each other. And then maybe commit yourself beyond this place to something greater than your own will. It's hard. It's a long journey, but it's worth it. All right. Our focus today is to pray for those who are spouses with people who are, uh, who spouse, pray for people whose spouses are dealing with <laughs> dementia, tongue tied there. And so pray for all those people who are dealing with loss and sickness and disease and specifically dementia, which is a sad thing as he, as our author pointed out, it's like 27 years is being erased, but it's not. God will redeem that, and all is still well. 
So we praise him in the midst of our storms. Let's pray. Loving God, give us courage to place all things into your hands, to submit our will to yours with an abundant faith, with abundant faith in your promises. That no matter what we face, we may smile in the face of it, knowing that something greater comes, even though we may not see it. So give us eyes to see, ears to, see, ears to hear, and your words upon our lips for others. In your gracious and holy name we pray. Amen. We'll see you next week.